Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Floor Planner. My name is Bob, and as I always say, I'm here for customer success. I'm here to support you all as you develop your skill and technique utilizing the Floor Planner platform. I want to talk today about the updates that have occurred here in 2025 um, up to the point of May. Last month, May 2025, I've got four updates that I'd like to share with you today. I want to show you where to locate those updates real quick. Um, let's go over to my Floor Planner account. I'm going to hop out of this project just for a second because this will be our demo project for today. I'm going to go back to my dashboard, upper left-hand corner of my screen and go to my dashboard tab in the upper left hand corner. When you select your dashboard tab, you will have on your right hand side this toolbar um, that will allow you to go ahead and go to the link for the new features, which is what we're gonna be talking about today and where are they listed. Uh, the new features over here with the most current update listed at the top. When you hit the more button over here in the upper right hand corner, it will take you to a full list of all the updates that have occurred uh, recent and also previous. So you can scroll back in time, see if you missed anything along the way because the new updates as they occur inside Floor Planner do occur immediately. There's nothing you have to do. Uh, it happens instantaneously inside the Floor Planner platform. So every time you reopen your Floor Planner account, these updates will have been activated. It's always nice to know what those updates are so you can cruise, cruise through this entire list and actually see them as they're occurring. These are some really powerful updates. I think you're going to enjoy hearing about these today. So we're going to be talking about editing the doors and windows in 3D. Really cool feature in there that you can help open the doors to an angle for your 3D uh, settings, which is really awesome. Uh, the SVG export as a vector image. We know that we can export our two-dimensional documents as uh, JPEG images, also as PDFs, which is one of my preferences uh, for the two-dimensional images. You can now also export your model as a two-dimensional image as an SVG export. Another format um, which is interchangeable with other softwares. Personally I've dropped it into PowerPoint and I'll show you a couple examples of that also. We're going to talk also about the custom materials and floor surfaces. As you've heard in the past year I've always talked about the ability to upload your own custom materials as JPEGs or PNG images for wall surfaces. A uh, really, really awesome feature is that same application now is applicable for your floor surfaces, including created surfaces from the toolbar for your draw command. Your build command of a surface can not only work with additional materials that are inside the floor planner library, but also you can upload your own custom materials, a JPEG PNG image, and also attach them to a surface and the floor surfaces. Then we're going to talk about the groups, which hopefully you've had the opportunity to work with groups in the past year. Um, they've gotten smarter, <laughs> so you have even more benefit of utilizing a group, and we'll take a peek at those also. So let's get started and maybe we'll start with talking about the editing the doors and windows in 3D. Doors and windows are now editable in 3D mode. You can change the colors, dimensions, uh, and I think most importantly that you can open and close the doors. Previously, you could have to have the doors closed, which is how you'd show them in the 3D mode, or there was an option in your 3D settings to not show the doors, which would be an opening, but not physically showing the door. Now you can actually angle the doors and open them in the 3D view. This will not affect your two-dimensional representation because that's more of an architectural layout, but the opening in the 3D view, really, really cool. So let's take a peek at that. Let's go back to my actual floor planner account, go into my projects, and open up my demo project for today. So we built a room 
and a couple pairs of French doors down here and a single door. Obviously their openings are here. If you select the door that you've inserted, left hand sidebar of course there's the information as you've been able to do in 2D previously where you can certainly change out the color of the door and the frame etc. And you, if you know the percentage of the door as you wanted to open it, you can actually set it here on the slider in the upper left hand corner. Visually you don't see any effect at this moment but this will alter the 3D view. Maybe a little easier for you to just go ahead and go into the 3D view upper right hand corner and I'm in the dollhouse view currently, orbit view, and I'm going to left click and just twirl around inside my space to get ourselves oriented to take a look at these particular doors. So these doors there's the new features that you can select the doors. Select the doors, same window over here on the left hand side, but you can now see that in 3D mode where we could actually change out the materials on the doors, which you also have materials in there now for wood grains, which you did not have previously. Um, so maybe we'll just go for maybe this maple wood grain for the door. Uh, we could also then choose to change out the frame color. Maybe I want the frame color to be in uh, black. Okay, so we've changed out the materials, but you can also go ahead and change out its opening. So I could take this and actually take the slider and choose to have the doors opened for my 3D view. Brand new feature. Uh, I think you'll enjoy this. I think it'll make your three-dimensional images much more creative. Uh, certainly these will render really, really beautiful when you're trying to give a hint of the room next door, uh, just a glimpse of it versus, versus having the doors totally closed. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move forward with the next update, and that would be the SVG export. Again, a different format for the export of the two-dimensional floor plan. I did go ahead and already export this plan, but I'll show you where this was again real quick. Let's go back. and go back to my 2D view. So if I was to be exporting this particular view or change its uh, settings to be a wireframe drawing, etc., you can hit the export image button in the upper right hand corner and you'll notice that you have the option, yes we have as a uh, SD level project or higher, the options to send it out as a JPEG image, as a two-dimensional document, or as an SD level project or higher. The PDF that you can export, again, one of my preferences. But you have the SVG option now. So if you select the SVG, it will create this uh, SVG file that will also be shown in your exports that you can download a copy to your device. I did download a copy to my device and I did drop that into my PowerPoint presentation. This is PowerPoint. And I took that SVG file and dropped it into as an inserted JPEG, well, as an inserted image into PowerPoint. It was an SVG. And what's really neat about the SVG is I actually selected the SVG and I exploded it, ungrouped it. And once it's, oh, excuse me, backwards. Oops, there we go. You can go ahead and grab these items inside floor planner, uh, excuse me, actually in a PowerPoint as an SVG file, and you can actually move the items around. So there's an independence. This one is still a group. Um, and again, I'm in a PowerPoint presentation where I can choose my group feature and ungroup. Um, so it depends on what you're trying to communicate, but you have a lot of control in here. This is not linked to floor planner. This was an exported SVG file um, as an image file, but being a vector line file, it has these abilities that you can uh, dissect them, if you will, if that's a value for you. And again, there are other softwares that you can utilize SVGs. I'm just showing it real quick in a PowerPoint presentation. Let's talk about custom materials for floors and surfaces. And again, let's go back to our example project for a second. And I've already applied a uh, material on the flooring of this room uh, over here, homemade by PVC. Um, 
This is in our library of materials inside Floor Planner. This surface that I put out here for a patio surface um, has no material assigned to it as yet. So let's do this together. This is a material that is from our library of materials. I'm going to go over to the material tab over here on the left hand side, select it, and you're going to notice a new feature over here. Choose a different material to apply to the room. Colors and materials, which you're accustomed to, colors of course being paints or colors, uh, materials from the material library inside Floor Planner, yet there's the custom tab now added for this particular floor surface of the room. If you go to custom, you're seeing my custom library, which I utilized previously using for my wall surfaces, yet I have access to them now for my floor surfaces, including the opportunity to put a new material in there. So if I say let's choose a new file, a JPEG or PNG image of a custom flooring material, I can find that on my desktop and I made a sample for us, uh, tumbled stone, uh, does not exist inside Floor Planner's library. So if I select this PNG image that I took from the internet and just say open it, that custom material is now added to my custom library. If I want to assign this to this particular flooring surface, I can select it. It's been assigned. I can also make some edits to that by selecting my flooring material again. There's the material that's custom that we just added on the left hand side. And there's the material settings. Inside material settings you'll find that you can change the horizontal and the vertical scale of the image. And if it's already in the balance and proper proportion as you want to see in X and Y directions, you can lock the scale also by hitting the lock button over here. And we can start increasing its scale proportionally in both directions or unlock it and do them in individual directions. You can also change the rotation of that material. So if I want to make it to zero instead of 90, it'll just rotate in the other direction or change it to any degree if you want to put them on a specific angle. Once those the image actually has been resized to your, your liking, this image is set, you can change the horizontal offset, which is repositioning the image itself when you're trying to figure, you know, which edge of the wall do you want to line up with which particular maybe grout line or a uh, planked flooring, etc. So you have a lot of power in here to do customization for the room actual floor custom upload JPEG PNG images of your own custom images that you care to utilize. Now I wanted to talk about the same for surfaces. Now if you haven't worked with surfaces, you know, we've drawn rooms, drawn walls to outline rooms. Drawing surfaces is just literally tracing out a paper thin shape that you can use for other purposes. We're just putting it on the ground on the floor out here. These surfaces that you create can also be edited with the four points on the corners. You can hover over the external edge and create other additional points to reshape the circles. Uh, the white circles in between will actually change a radius of that outside edge if you care to. These surfaces can be given in their settings thickness. You can also raise them from the floor so creative kitchen counters, island countertops and such. Uh, the question I've had before is like, hey, can I put my own custom JPEG PNG image to a surface? Previously, no, uh, but now you can. So the same surface, I made a surface out here for my deck. And with the deck, the material is actually a paint color. Currently, if I select it, you'll see over here, choose a different color. Choose a different color is also color and or materials from the material library of floor planner. Yet, you also now have custom. So if I select custom, I could, yeah, I could put that same flooring from as we inserted into our living room inside here. But I'm gonna put a different one inside here. I want to try something different. So let's choose another file, more of a patio with grass in between papers. If you select it, uh, as this is a PNG image that I found online, say open it, 
It also drops into my custom library. If I want to assign that to this outdoor patio space, I can select it. Looking fairly well. I'm probably going to make some changes to that. Uh, I'm not really liking the scale on it, so I could left click on that particular surface. Go to its custom material on the left hand side. And let's go ahead and look at the material settings. Um, I don't like the proportions in there, so let's start talking about changing its scale and start making those stone tiles a little bit wider visually so they look really square, just for my liking. And I think that's pretty well. I don't think I have to make too much movement on there. And I'm going to go ahead and close that out for right now. And that's pretty nice. Um, really nice detail and they're actually something we don't have inside the floor planner library but it's custom. Go to 3D and what have we created? Put that image outside. Right now there's a lot of sunshine outside that's why it's looking so bright and we can certainly adjust that sunshine for our renderings. But custom, custom images now at this point. Let's take a look. I think the last update we want to talk about today the smarter groups. So let's go back to our example project right here again. And let's talk about, hmm, there's one dining room table and there's some chairs. So it's not a group currently. Um, I could hold, uh, I could select an item and hold my shift key and select another item and hold my shift key and select another item. Or I could hold my shift key and my left mouse click and drag out a selection window over all items, all the objects, and it's furniture. You can choose through the tabs over here if other items are selected to deselect items that you maybe didn't want in your group and create a group. So I'm going to make a custom group for right now. Custom group is going to be created. I'll just call it Bob Dining Four Chair. Just to give it a namesake, so it's a bit. So this, you know, of course, that's how you make a group. And the group has been made, and it's there. And these are the different items that are inside that particular layout. Great. Now, the group's been created. So where is the group? Of course, is to go over here to the Objects tab and categories, brands, and or groups, go to groups. Inside groups, there is that same group we just made, Bob, dining, four chair, left click, drag, and drop. Now, this is the new feature. <laughs> so we used to drag and drop and it would ungroup for you. So temporarily, momentary grouping. Uh, now I can click on it still and it stays grouped nice new feature to, you know, maybe I dropped it in, but I dropped it into the wrong location and I wanted to still move it, we can do so. I can select this group and over here on the left hand side, you now have a new tab for the group. You can ungroup on command. So I can go over here and actually ungroup for right now. And now I have the separate components. I could also go ahead and maybe start making some modifications and I wanted something to look a little bit different inside my group. I can select my item over here and select the regroup button. And notice that with the change, I've actually regrouped. I think you will enjoy these new features. I think the ungroup is awesome. This is working in 2D currently. Keep your eyes open for advancements in this as the uh, programmers go forward to continuously make this better. I believe we're going to have some advantages utilizing this group ungroup also in the 3D view going forward. Not just yet, not just now in the first week of June, uh, but do keep your eyes open for that advancement. Uh, but for right now, I think you will really, really enjoy that feature. I appreciate you taking the time with me today to review these last four updates. And I hope that you can come back and join me again um, next month or in the coming months to review any additional updates as they go forward throughout this year for 2025. Until then, hope you have a great day and catch you on the next time.
Thank you so much.